the time has come to set sail on yet another new adventure. That's right, you're watching Adventure Sean, and I'm here in the second largest city in Sweden. Today I'm going to explore one of the most beautiful cities I've ever been to. I first came to Gothenburg in 2014 and I absolutely fell in love with it. In this video I'm going to go around, have an explore, see different parts of the city and just genuinely enjoy a day here in the beautiful weather or as it is at the moment, it has forecast rain later on. This city is gorgeous and I'm starting off here in what is probably my favourite area of the city. It is the port of Gothenburg. Look at this yacht, the Princess 50. I wouldn't mind being sat in there and steering this one out of the port. Loads of different yachts, some a bit more glamorous than others. Look at that over in the background there, massive ship, the Viking ship that's called. It's permanently docked here and I believe there's a restaurant on there and even accommodation. You can actually sleep in the cabins whilst it's docked up here in Gothenburg. Let's go over and have a look. Look at the size of that boat. It's incredible to stand at the bottom of it just here and the fact that you can sleep on there, there's a bar, there's even a restaurant just on the top there, it looks fantastic, it really does. That's definitely somewhere to look at staying in the future. Access up there to the bar, I assume that's open on an evening. And that's the entrance just there to the hotel, restaurant, and I presume conference means conference in Swedish. Or I'm guessing so anyway, you know what my pronunciation's like. Especially over on Theme Park Worldwide. I do lunch from 11.30 till 2.30. And there you go, look at that. Permanently docked here. I assume it could move if it wanted to. But you can just make out through the little portholes, all the different bedrooms and all the different cabins. Fascinating. And that's a really impressive building as well. I assume that's all to do with the port and the fact you've got like a little watchtower at the top there looking over the port of Gothenburg. Amazing building. That's one very, very lucky man in there. I'm assuming that's his yacht anyway. Another building that I quite like around here at the port is the Gothenburg Opera House. I do like the design of this and there's quite a few little details on it as well. All these different bits of artwork on the outside. And you've got all patterns in the wall just there on the left hand side as well. Looks like there's something going on in there today. There's just been a big group of people go walking in. I'm not too sure what this is supposed to be over here, but I quite like it. Comment below. Maybe I'm being stupid, but what is it? That guy's certainly fascinated though. He took about 10 photos. One of my favorite parts about this city center, the beautiful tram network. Look at that. Around a 10 minute walk from the Opera House and the port is the Gothenburg Central Station, the main transport hub of this city. Another piece of art just out the front here. This actually takes you through into Nordstan, which is a big shopping centre on the other side of the street just there. And here it is, the Central Station. Quite a few shops in there, a few recognisable brands, such as Starbucks Coffee. But I really like this building just here. You can tell this is really old and then as the station's expanded over the years, they've obviously attached onto the side of it. And this continues around the front here as well. Just really like the cream design of it. Now how clean all them bricks are, considering how old that probably is, there might be a date on the building somewhere. Fascinating. Let's have a look around the front. Now there's no date on the building, but you can see from this side as well that there's a clock up there at the top. And it's just a really nice building. It's not just home to the train network for Sweden, it's also got a huge bus depot next to it as well, uh, where you can get buses to lots of different locations. It's a big transport hub this, because it also connects another one of my favourite parts of this city. The fantastic tram network, and there it is. It's a combination, a bit like the London Underground, a combination of really old trams, like that one, just on the left-hand side, and some of the more modern ones, like this one here on the right. Now, there's no time for sitting down relaxing, boys. Sitting there, enjoying the sunshine on top of the pole. Not too sure what they're doing, but I like it. It adds a bit of charm to this huge open area. And here's me thinking that London had a lot of bikes. I've been to Amsterdam, and there's even more than this there. But it certainly seems that they love the healthy lifestyle here in Sweden too. 
lots of cycles all the way around the city. And that's what I like to see. Now you've definitely got to be careful where you tread when you're walking around Gothenburg because the tram network has rails just like this running through busy paths so you've always got to be watching things around you and like I just mentioned with the cycles there's actually cycle lanes but not on the road like they are back home they're actually on the footpaths so whilst you're walking around you've got to give priority to the cycles there's loads of them everywhere all the way around and they're not afraid to give you a little ding of the bell if you're standing in the way this is what I mean you've got to watch where you're going look I just stepped out then gets very close I do like that style tram. I love the old ones. So much charm. A lot of character. Now the sun is shining this evening here in Sweden, meaning it's a perfect opportunity to have a walk through the park. I'm just looking at that sign just there and the fact that there's a human turnstile just there on the right hand side as well to me suggests that this used to be paid for entry. However, it does say now the park is open daily between these hours and it's also free entrance. But the fact it's got that turnstile and what looks to be like an old ticket window there, looks to me like it used to be charged to walk around here. I can see kind of why though, because it's a huge area and there's little indoor bits to walk around as well. I just love that Scandinavian style architecture. All these buildings, the, the wooden style effect on them. I really like it. They're a bit like German buildings, but I think these just top it in terms of having a bit more character to them. And they're normally a little bit brighter as well. There's a map actually of the park and there's like some huge conservatories, the Palm House it's called, just there in the middle. You can walk around that. Playground, lots of area just to sit down, have a relax and enjoy the Swedish sunshine. That is when it's sunny in Sweden. It might look really nice, but it's actually a little bit chilly. There's quite a few really nice quaint areas inside this park where you can just sit down, relax, buy a drink and a cake. These buildings are lovely just here on the right hand side. I can imagine when it's really sunny, nice hot day, sitting out there, it'd be gorgeous. You've got some little fountains down there as well. Another information board. And if we look just over there through the trees, you can just make out atmosphere the drop tower, used to be an observation tower, and the ferris wheel just below it there, over at Lissyberg Amusement Park. That's how I discovered this whole beautiful city. That's a really nice building there as well, look at the details on that. I just love this style of like wooden building, I love it. It's a good planting around here as well. Yeah, that's the palm house. I don't think it's open at this time of night, but in the daytime you can walk round and there's not loads to see in there, but loads of different tropical plants and especially when it's a bit cooler outside, it's normally quite a bit warmer in there as well. These are really quite cool. Look at the shape of some of them topiaries in there. You've got an open flower at the top, then it looks to me like a snail down there at the bottom. I'm not too sure if it is. Comment below. Is it a snail? It's quite hard to tell from this angle. I'm pretty sure that's the shell at the back, then it's neck. But I'm still not too sure. Something that I do love is a good waterfall or fountain. This one's quite nice. It's simple, but effective. In the middle of all the flower beds here. What a beautiful area to just sit down, relax. If you go to university around here, you can just chill out. Or if you're a tourist like I am, come and explore. See the culture over here. It's actually really nice to come away from what would normally be a normal tourist hotspot sometimes. It's all of the rivers that run through Gothenburg that make it so beautiful and really picturesque. And seeing everybody sitting down here having drinks and picnics on a Friday evening, that to me just shows that back home, we take things all a little bit too seriously sometimes. It's nice to just sit down, relax, uh, stress-free environment. And that's what people are doing here. It's lovely. You've got quite a few nice bars and things. However, I do warn you that if you like having a beer, I found this a couple of years ago, uh, beer is a bit expensive over here in Sweden compared to what it is back home uh, so I do stick to the soft drinks for now but uh, yeah this is lovely here you got like a little bar area looking over all these buildings really nice I mean obviously Sweden's famous for being quite cold and Scandinavia in general but it's a little bit chilly tonight but it's nothing too bad really 
I mean, everybody wouldn't be sitting outside if it wasn't that bad. Isn't that nice? I was just chilling out, socialising, quite a few beers on the go. Lovely that. You can have a good half an hour's walk through that park. Really nice. I might even hire a bike one day when I'm here. Have a little cycle round. Lovely. Something that's also very different in Sweden is the noise that these make when you cross the road. There's no beep, beep, beep. It's like a, a chatter, like a knocking noise for crossing the road. It's a lot louder. You certainly know when it's your time to cross. And it just ticks like a clock. <laughs> when the sun goes down and the stars come out, Gothenburg becomes even more beautiful. And there's no better place to get spectacular views of the city than Gothia Towers and the incredible elevator on the side of the building. The speed that this elevator goes is absolutely incredible. 23 floors up, providing spectacular views of Gothenburg. And just down there, the place what made me discover this beautiful city for the first time, Liseberg Amusement Park. Really does look stunning in the dark. And this lift is very, very fast. 29 seconds to be precise. Now that is one very impressive entrance to a hotel. Look at that, wow. Gothia Towers really is an impressive structure. Three towers connected there by the walkways and there's even a swimming pool hanging off the edge of the building and obviously with that hotel you get the fantastic views over to Lissyburg and as I say just in the lift if it wasn't for this stunning amusement park I would never have seen this gorgeous city Lissyburg was the reason for me coming here and you guys are watching this video because you've probably seen my theme park content. Theme Park Worldwide, the main channel that I do, uh, brought me out here to see this park uh, and now has allowed me to make this video about the city. I've barely even scratched the surface in this short video but I wanted to show you guys a few of my favourite spots in Gothenburg. If you've got any suggestions for next time I come then comment below on this video because I'd love to come back and discover lots of different things. There's Universium, uh, there's a few different museums, lots of things I'd love to discover here in this beautiful Swedish city. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you watch my other videos on Theme Park Worldwide from Liseberg. And of course, get yourselves out there and have your own adventure. See you soon.